analyzing how the senses work inside animals is very complex. Just imagining the images that insects see with their compound eyes, or getting an idea of what they hear, what they smell, or what they perceive with organs that no vertebrate has, would drive anyone crazy. It's impossible to understand how the brains of these beings that are so different from us use the information that they receive. We can only deduce certain things from their behavior, but observing them can still be very interesting. The most curious thing to know about when one mantis attacks another, for example, would be if it recognizes its victim as a peer or not. Does this enormous African stick mantis know that it is eating a tiny boxer mantis? Rival lions do kill each other, but they don't then eat their enemy. Whenever one mantis confronts another of the same size, however, the fight can only end in one way. One of them devours the other. Cannibalism isn't taboo for mantises, nor is it taboo for lions. But in a lion's mind, he's only supposed to eat what he has previously hunted, not what he's killed in a fight over territory. Mantises, on the other hand, eat each other just as if they were eating a grasshopper or any other insect. Until breeding time comes, they eat whatever they can. Afterwards, their sexual hormones cancel that instinct between males and females. Well, almost always. One of the characteristics that conditions these insects' way of life is camouflage. They survive by staying invisible. Which is why the deepest reaches of the mind of a mimetic mantis, like the orchid mantis, drives the insect to imitate a plant as much as possible. It must ignore the passing of time, not feel hungry, and avoid making any movements that can be detected by either its prey or its predators. Just a quick glance to focus on its prey. And capture it in flight. We can deduce that mantises have the ability to distinguish their prey from other animals, to recognize which ones represent a danger and which ones don't. They can even distinguish males from females. But if a fly comes too close, could it be a trap? Whatever is strange is always scary. The flower mantis isn't afraid, however. It's used to even having its meals land on it from time to time. Flies must have similar visual acuity to that of mantises. But the fly arrived on the flower after its predator. For the fly, everything was the flower. But if the mantis had tried to approach the fly, however, things would have been very different. <laughs> 